so welcome. Um, I'm not sure if you all caught my name. I'm Seth Schneider, and we have um, Neil Gornflow and Millicent Johnson on the call from Shareable, and we're so happy you can uh, all join us today. Uh, so, uh, Neil, can I turn things over to you for a quick whirlwind history of Shareable? Yeah, sure. And first, I, I want to thank everyone for coming. It means a lot to us, and I'm going to keep this really short because we're really here to listen. So this is a, a short history. Well, one of the uh, some of the feedback we got in our first session was that people wanted to know more about the history of Shareable. So that will be one of the pages that we have um, on the new website. Um, and, and the short history is, is you know, we, we launched in October uh, 1st, 2009, and when we launched, there wasn't really any sharing community, um, or at least um, a sort of identity around that. And uh, what we noticed was there was a lot of there was a lot of energy and a lot of things emerging. Though this was before, like Lisa Gansky's book, the, the Mesh came out, or Rachel Botman's book about cloud consumption. Um, and and so we launched a site that our small stakeholder group. Um, uh, thought was a good start, you know, and we we didn't have the luxury of having community to um, to work with uh, to um, get input from and build something for. Um, and but despite that, you know, we've grown from zero readers to forty to fifty thousand um, unique visitors per month. Wow! Uh, and we have a global brand, and we just had a book published. We've done groundbreaking stories. Um, we did the first science fiction about the about the sharing economy, for instance. We won an award from the Northern California Society of Professional Journalists for some exploratory journalism. And now we have, um, I think, a very vibrant sharing community, certainly um, a core of very passionate evangelists and entrepreneurs um, and readers and practitioners. And, and so I'm really excited about how far we can go, how far we can go with our community. You know, judging from how far we went without a community, so this is really exciting to us. I look forward to hearing hearing uh, uh, more about what uh, what you'd like. Great, thanks, Neil. Um, so, as Neil was saying, you know, we launched uh, almost three years ago now, and uh, the website hasn't really changed significantly um, itself during that time, even though the content and the audience. Um, have grown and changed. Um, so we are we have begun this process to redesign the website. And as part of that, we're listening to what our uh, community wants. And um, we want to know uh, how Shareable can better serve you. Um, we want to know how you think Shareable can better uh, serve the sharing movement. And uh, you know we're trying to make Shareable more shareable. And uh, we want to <laughs> Create shareable uh, with you and not just for you. Um, so uh, recently, we've we've done some things so far. Some of you may already be aware of this. We had a reader survey this spring um, that uh, told us more about who our audience is, and uh, some you know people mentioned some ideas that they had for the website. In that, um, we talked a little bit for those that joined early in the call. Um, we had an event uh, on July 27th in San Francisco for people who are in uh, local here, uh, where where the staff are based, um, and it was uh, you know it was really great hearing people's positive energy and uh, seeing how people want to help create shareable with us, and uh, we also received great ideas and feedback, and uh, there were three main uh, topic areas at that event that people wanted to focus on. Um, there was uh, the content on the site, so articles, videos, that kind of content that primarily articles that appear on the site. Um, there was uh, engagement, so how can people engage more on the website? But there was also a really strong interest in having uh, ways um, to engage, meet up, etc., um, uh, offline, face to face. In person, um, and there were also some uh, other improvements that people had. You know, changes to the homepage as an example um, that people were were interested in. Um, so, uh, just because you know we've got technology on this uh, call, 
there's this little poll here. Uh, we thought we would, um, if you want to just click and say which topic you're most um, wanting to discuss today, and um, that'll tell us uh, which one we go to first. Um, so uh, for those of you that have already entered I, um, your selection, you'll see the results coming in and uh, it, they will show up in a moment. Uh, let me skip ahead to the results myself. Uh, wow, it's, uh, it's like San Francisco. <laughs> People are really interested in engaging online and face-to-face, -face, which is very exciting because that was a strong uh, theme that came out uh, of that event. So uh, I, we, we got that, that was uh, for I think pretty much everyone on the call who's not staff has voted now. And uh, let's go ahead with that topic first. And I think we'll have time to cover all of them, but uh, let's go where uh, people have the most energy. So um, we are going to cover these uh, three sections roughly 15 minutes each, um, but we'll see you know, where people have the most interest in talking about. And there will be ways, you know, we may not have time to get everyone's feedback during the call, so we'll get as much as we can. Um, we are also having additional ways to get feedback um, once the call, once the meeting is over. Um, so I'm going to turn it over for a moment to Millicent to um, just briefly describe uh, some of the, these findings that people were telling us at that event, and then we will open it up and, um, and hear your thoughts. Um, well, as Seth said, it was a really great event. Um, let's bring the sharing of uh, folks who are a community together and to really think deeply about how Shareable can best serve our community and be a platform for our community to meet their needs as they're participating in the sharing economy. Um, and just like you guys, uh, engaging online and face to engaging offline and face to face is the most important thing. So some things that came up for people were wanting to know more about events that are happening in their communities and neighborhoods. Um, events that are community driven, so maybe hosted by community members, and events that are fun, um, and maybe a sharing day in which people could actually experience the sharing economy firsthand, um, maybe a series of events that allow people to experience different parts of the sharing economy. Um, another one was perhaps something like a LinkedIn for the sharing economy where people could see how they're linked and see what other projects people are working on. And then finally, people thought about more calls to action. So this could mean something like um, calling folks to action around legislation, but it could also mean calling folks to try out a service for one month, something like um, ride sharing or trying out meeting their neighbors or getting connected to their community and writing about it for Shareable. So asking more of the community and asking the community to um, give us their personal experiences of sharing on a more regular basis. Great. Um, thanks for the, the recap. And um, so now I'd like to open it up to everyone and find out um, you know, what your thoughts are. Um, what, do you like these ideas? Do you have other ideas? And uh, yeah, so yeah, let's open it up. And oh, one other point to make is um, Throughout, throughout this uh, feedback today, please be frank and open, and uh, you can be blunt if you want. It's not going to hurt our feelings. We're, we're looking for feedback. <laughs> okay, maybe I'll start. Sharon from Adelaide. Um, I was interested in, in the feedback from the 27th of July event and, and this idea of you know, how do you drive connection offline because me trying to talk about this here, this sort of this perception that, oh, it's all, you know, it's connecting people on the internet and I'm saying, no, 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 it's driving this activity offline but people have to be able to find each other to do that, whether that's through specific events or just by finding out what sharing assets there are within their immediate area, for example, a tool lending library or a food swap. So my kind of, I'm working in the state government of South Australia, just to clarify, so I'm trying to get government to understand that it can become an enabler and um, a force for making all this activity visible through uh, some kind of map based on the idea of a green map, but we'll call it a share map just to make sure we capture people that don't respond to the green frame. 
Um, and the second thing I've proposed is some kind of a challenge. You know, we've got people out there earning virtual badges for doing things like writing reviews on TripAdvisor, so bringing in game dynamics around theme challenges. I mean, good goodies have done this kind of thing as well, but rather than a challenge a day, maybe make it over a month so people have got a chance to sort of do these things, get into it a bit deeper. Um, and the idea that you would earn a badge for participating in an activity and then you might earn a second level badge um, and then you might sort of get your guru badge at the end of it by involving another person. So the idea of building in game dynamics, having this kind of, you know, visibility of your participation through things like, you know, the open source badges that Mozilla provide um, would be a really interesting thing to build in. And, you know, you'd have a, a profile as a, as a member of the, the sharing community and your sort of status comes from how much, you know, this sharing share idea that I read about in the feedback, your status would come from how much you can encourage other people to, to be involved and get other people to, to, to try something new. Really a lot of this is about the habits we, that we've got into and how can we encourage people to, to try something new and get into a new habit. Great. Wow. Thank you. Um, other folks want to chime in? Yeah, I'd like to... Um, yeah, that, uh, the, uh, first of all, I'd like to wholeheartedly agree with everything that sort of is Ooh, up on the slide and came out from the, the San Francisco meeting that um, sort of encapsulated a lot of the stuff that I was thinking and also hadn't have been thinking, but... Um, was feeling, I guess, and hadn't put into words yet. Um, another thing which I'd thought in terms of um, connecting people at a at a actual, you know, in in the real world, so to speak, was to have somewhere, in some way, a sort of localized, um, well, a page which would have each. Um, the different types of sharing organizations in a particular geographical area yep. or localized mm -hmm. area. So going on to, you know, be it Adelaide or San Francisco or, you know, wherever. And having a list of shareable endorsed, now I don't know what that could mean, what the criteria would be, but essentially, you know, I think it's fairly common sense generally, you know, is it... Um, is it, you know, conforming to the general principles of collaborative consumption or the like? So people can actually go to the site. Not only can they read about the philosophy and whatnot, but then they can click on wherever they are or wherever they plan to go and see the, the local um, sharing organizations which are operating in that physical space. So as aside from, you know, the, the global networks like, um, you know, couch surfing and whatnot, which expand globally and you know connect the locals also the ones that are local specific so whatever mm. you know farmers markets are on in there and then that gives incentive to people who are you know living in a particular space to say oh, you know we can we can use it as a promotion tool for us and then they you know put themselves up there and then they notice other sharing like organizations which are doing similar things in their their region and um yeah they can connect as well so so that was the the, the only extra point that um i thought i could make yeah so yeah connecting people not connecting people who visit the site with people in their area but also organizations and things that are happening yeah yeah so it's yeah. sort of like a, a, a i guess you know i'm hesitant to use the word promotion just because you know it's it's so tied up in sort of the, the marketing sort of lingo and stuff. But I guess it really is, you know. It's, it's, it's a platform for sharing organizations to promote themselves, to um, gain exposure, and then also recognize others um, at the local level. Yeah. Okay, so I guess you. it could be just in effect, you know, a, a, a page where there's a list of all the um, geographical areas which have, organizations um, listed on them on the site and you would just click on the one city and then from there you know, there might be categories whether it be you know the the food or the civic participation or campaigns or whatever and um, yeah you would click on there and there would be the list of yeah the respective groups or organizations or whatever it may be um, one thing to so this is Jesse. Yeah. Sorry. go ahead please go Okay. okay, thanks. Um, one of the, just very quickly, 
um, go to the website greenmap.org and that's Wendy Brower. She started in New York and they've been doing a series of, they're using a, an international kind of platform that allows communities to create their own maps in their own area. Um, they started off doing hard copy maps, but of course now we've got this great you know, internet and, and um, smartphones and everything, which has made it much, much more um, easy to use. And that's the kind of sort of approach that you could look at if you were trying to map things geographically, because one of the Mm. The things I've encountered, he was trying to, you know, communicate to our board members who I'm trying to influence where sharing activity is happening. And I understand, of course, it's much more of a, at, a, at a critical mass in the States, but there is stuff happening here and it's a matter of finding it. But sometimes you might go onto a, a site that even though it is something that anybody like Airbnb or Couchsurfing can use globally, sometimes um, there's more activity going on in the States or somewhere else and certainly less in Australia or, you know, somewhere that hasn't reached a critical mass. So sometimes it's hard to tell if there's any sharing activity going on around that particular issue in a geographic area. So to be able to kind of interrogate um, the information in a geographic way as well as by category would be really useful and, of course, by map is visually the best, best kind of way to do it because you go onto a collaborative consumptions website and they've sort of got this thing where you can submit you know, something that you've spotted, which is fantastic. But it's just this really, really long list of links and I've just gone, oh my God, how do I find out which ones are operating in Australia at any kind of level of, you know, anything going on? And it's hard to do. So it's almost like, it, I, I hate to use the word database because <laughs> I know that means a lot of work in, in creating one, but it's almost like how could you interrogate something to find out by category and by um, location and maybe a, a Google map is some simple way to do that, some kind of you know um, framework around that that that, that is shareables, but using using some kind of mapping tool to to be able to allow people to sort of zoom in. Um, if you're trying to influence you know decision makers locally, it, it just really helps to be able to point to local examples and be able to pull that information out quickly. That's yeah, I think that as well. The actual physical representation in the form of a map is you know something that's being used more and more, in which. Um, I think really gives people a sense of connecting the internet with their, you know, physical um, space and communities, you know. Look, there I am, and look, three streets over, there's a community garden or, you know, whatever. Um, so, yeah, I think physical maps as well, yeah, if, if possible, is a great idea. Now, my, uh, this is Jesse from uh, San Francisco. Um, my, uh, I, think, I think that you guys have, have very much uh, elaborated upon the, the idea of, of visualizing where some sort of visualization of all this data. And I think mm. that's extremely important. And my only, my only thought on, on the map concept first is that um, for some companies, a map is really, like it's, it's hard to represent them on a map. Um, mm. Like where would you represent relay rides, for example? Sure. Um, and that is, you know, so I think that, um, that you could have almost, I mean, when the way you you were talking about um, how to organize this on a sort of local level, because I think at the end of the day it does come down to what you can do at your local level. Um, it sounded a lot like how Craigslist is organized. You know, uh, you have your different sections of, of you know your different categories, and you you're, you're, sorry, you start out with your different cities or countries, and then you click on that, and then it you know it, it reduces that to the different categories, and you can click in different categories, and then it lists. The different events or or anything really, and uh, people can post. Now, I'm not suggesting that shareable become uh, share a Craigslist essentially, <laughs> uh, but but I but I mean the way that you uh, you both were speaking about it, the you know the Australians. Uh, um, I, I didn't catch your names. Uh, sorry, I missed it. But um. Uh, it sounded a lot like Craigslist. Now, one of the things that I wanted to sort of riff on, based off of what you were just saying, is 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 the is the um, oh, shoot the listings and fi and just finding finding what's going on. And I think that shareable could play a crucial role in 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 aggregating whatever was going on locally. Now, I was I RSVP'd to two two events today. Uh, on Facebook, and I was realizing that I really don't RSVP to anything unless it's on Facebook or um, if it's if it's part of uh, any of the meetup groups or that I that I'm involved in. 
And, um, and I think that integrating, with, in, integrating Shareable with Meetup or with Facebook in a more direct manner such that people could RSVP from Shareable um, or their, that their Facebook events, if after they log in, could be sort of sourced into the Shareable or, or vice versa, something like that. Mm. Um, I think that some sort of integration in that respect would be, would be helpful to sort of link a platform that I myself am using multiple times a day, both for business and for personal reasons, um, you know, to show shareable events um, or events that are part of the sharing economy. Um, that's, you know, a couple of cents. Great. Hey Thanks, Jesse. Um, I just want to give a um, mention. I think um, Marisa might have just joined the call, and uh, to also see if Jason and there. I think there's one other person on the call who's not on the webinar, so I don't know your name. But if you're there, if this, if either of the three of you want to speak up, please uh, go for it. Yeah, this is Marisa. Can you hear me? Oh yes. Hi. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, I joined in late. Um, I'm based in Melbourne, and uh, thanks for having this. This is really cool. I just wanted to uh, comment on what Jesse just said. I think it's, it's sort of like a general comment that's not specific to Shareable, but I think it's especially appropriate uh, for Shareable because it's in terms of being smarter and cleaner uh, about how we use our resources, be them material resources or just energy in general. Uh, this idea of not reinventing the wheel, right? So if we already have, if there's people that are doing things extremely successfully like Meetup or Craigslist or anything like that, I think that finding a way of interfacing with them with it from the shareable platform is great rather than asking people to come to yet another place. And mm -hmm. I think um, my observation is that a lot of us are trying to do for example, my current gig, I um, work at the Wilderness Society, which is an uh, Enviro NGO based in Australia, and we're uh, giving a lot of thought to this idea of how do we go about um, petitioning for things online. And the reality is that there's so many platforms of people that are doing this extremely successfully. Um, and so rather than trying to develop the technology ourselves, maybe we can find a way of interfacing with, with places where people already go to take part of that activity. And it's, it's something that I think we can all agree on, and it seems like an old idea, right? It's like, well, of course we wouldn't try to reinvent the wheel, but my personal experience in practice is that we tend to do that, and I think um, it's, it's completely aligned with what my understanding of shareable is to try to basically minimize the effort and take advantage, if you will, or just share, right? Share in yep. um, what other people have done. So I, I really agree with Jesse's view on finding a way to go about doing that. And uh, this is Seth. Um, we just, you know, we also have a relatively small budget, so where we can take advantage of resources that are out there, it seems like a good idea as well. Hey man, thanks, Marissa. So it's also the shareable way, right? I mean, if we're in the sharing well, economy, we should be sort of copying whenever we can, right? <laughs> exactly. That was exactly my point. It's not only sort of practically, it's just so aligned with what you guys are all about, I think. Um, and, and even for people like myself, who the concept of shareable is something that most of my colleagues wouldn't necessarily think of at the forefront of their work on a daily basis, it's super aligned and just basically subreptitiously um, infiltrating other areas of work because they're aligned with us without... I love what somebody commented on in terms of like, oh, don't call it green because it may turn some people off, call it shareable, it's like, and vice versa. Um, but yeah, not reinventing the wheel in terms of tools is a, is a really clean way of doing that, I think. So my comment was I encourage you to um, use what's there, and, and if you find clean ways of making it look like you guys are seamlessly curating all these tools, I'll be the first one applauding and trying to copy it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jason or the other person on the line whose name I don't know, did you have anything to add before we move on to the next um, section? Uh, this is Jason. The only thing I want to push, I push here is that on a community level, you always want to embrace the new people to join in, and it's kind of the same group over and over. But I, I feel like as long as you can figure out a way to communicate for people who are already involved in the sharing economy to, you know, share their stories to their friends and their families who aren't familiar, just don't understand how, how things are going, 
to use them because of this conversation. I think the hardest part when you're trying to focus on a face-to-face event, and it just kind of sh- shifts away from the original conversation of the map, but the idea is that everyone has a different story of sharing and they have their own interpretation. So it's kind of figure out that thin line of how this is all you know, stay relevant to somebody new. Uh, at, at least for you know, our community base at Zimri, like that's one of the things you know, we have to constantly focus on is, yes, everyone travels, and the first barrier is about money, but really the is about you know, encouraging new people. So trying to kind of hammer out the, a clear message for these community-driven events you know, would really help in that aspect. Instead of being like, there are so many things you can do out there in the world, it's more of a, there are so many things you can do to connect with people, and this is one way you can do it, or plenty of ways to do it. Thanks. Um, Jeff, I wanted, to, yeah. I wanted yeah. to add one more thing, Seth. Um, Please. So you mentioned sort of a, a LinkedIn style uh, something connection to see sort of what people are working on. Um, this was I yeah. This was an idea that came out of the uh, out of the group. I was in that group, and it was um, I think that the gist behind it was how could people see the connections um, to each other, see who I they're think, connected I think to, that's and find each other. Really cool. I think that's really cool. I know that from a personal standpoint, it's, it's been kind of a pain. I mean, my, my last company was based in Portugal, and so coming to the San Francisco you know, sharing economy uh, a little bit cold um, has made it somewhat difficult to start organizing things. I mean, one of the things that I want to do is, is open up a more public policy dialogue, et cetera, and I know Millicent is you know, working on that. So, but like, I had to go to collaborative chats and then actually getting joining up with Milson has been, I don't want to say difficult, but like we haven't really done it yet. So uh, being able to see sort of what people are working on in some way, maybe like a LinkedIn in map of sorts um, on a personal level would be really, really cool. On a professional level, you know, uh, just share it. I mean, we license our software to people. So if someone is thinking of, of, um, starting a car sharing company and they don't know about us, then that is, you know, having something like that would be really useful from a business perspective as well, and we would be able to grow quicker and be able to tell people, hey, you should check us out. Um, so I think on, in both respects, uh, that would be a, an extremely useful thing, at least from my personal and business perspective. Thanks. Thanks, Jesse. Uh, uh, was there any last uh, thoughts on this section? Sure. I've, I've got one um, more. I just thing. wanted to, you know, hello? hello? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, this is Michael Stoll in San Francisco. Um, so I, I jumped on the call late. Uh, I'm, I am on my bike commute right now, so uh, uh, I'm, I'm catching up on the, on the uh, webinar. So, um, but I'm actively listening. Thanks, Michael. Wow. Cool way to join us. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess uh, the one more thing that I wanted to speak about, Seth, is the uh, is using a service for one month. Again, I thought that was super cool. There is a company in Europe called Pathfinder um, that is trying to be a social network for entrepreneurs. and um, And wouldn't it be cool if all of these founders, I mean, the startup community is big enough so that theoretically any startup could get a reasonable amount of traction just by having a bunch of entrepreneurs try it for a month or something like that. So um, that's kind of everybody's contributing to one thing, and, and I think that if, there, if that call to action were, were uh, originated from Shareable, um, that you know, you're, I mean, 40 to 50,000 unique visitors a month is, is serious, you know? So uh, that, would be, that would be something that you guys could really, um, that would be a way to affect change, in my opinion. I think I would like to second that. Yeah, that's, that's a, a great way to think about actually um, connecting the, the principles and the, the ideas with, um, yeah, real action by getting the, the community, if they're so inclined, if they, they can, they're interested in a particular idea to um, get involved with yeah, actual um, yeah, um, projects or ideas. Yeah, I think that's great. Well, thanks everyone for these ideas. I do want to move us along. Um, please, if you're having other thoughts at the moment, jot them down and we'll um, make sure to be able to collect those after the call. But I want to make sure we cover a couple of the other areas as well, um, and we are. Uh, it's already um, 
40 past the hour. And so um, the and for those that joined late, we're we're going through the the three sections that we talked about at um, the San Francisco event about two weeks ago. People were really interested in talking about three three kind of topic areas. So this was the first one, and the people on today's call had the most interest in this one. So we're going to move on to the next one now, um, which is um, improvements to the website. Um, and so uh, these are things that what, what people are identifying with that was um, some improvements to the home page. Um, one comment that came up a couple of times was reducing the, the clutter, having it be a cleaner look, I think is what people meant by that. Um, uh, easier to read on mobile devices, whether that's cell phones or tablets, uh, making sure as that as the use of those devices increases that it's easy to use shareable or to read to read and use shareable um, on those devices. And um, job listings was an idea that was mentioned about um, having uh, job postings from uh, sharing friendly companies and organizations and even uh, cooperatives. So um, again, want to open it up and uh, hear what uh, people think about these ideas or other kinds of changes. So here we're again thinking, you know, how the site functions, how well, you know, how it's working or not working um, for you. One of the, um, the things I've been going to, the, to look on the internet for um, in trying to write a board paper and trying to convince people about who were sort of new to this about what's happening out there is statistics. Um, and so if, even if there could be, you know, four people who run these uh, initiatives to be able to come in and submit a stat or just something, I mean, I'm, I don't know whether some of this information sort of commercial and confidence or whatever, but I mean, if we could have somewhere where people could go to get key stats about um, participation in whatever it is, car sharing or, um, to, you know, how many how many tool lending libraries there are or, you know, just, it, it's been really hard for me to try and create a sense of this is becoming a social norm for people without some numbers around it. Um, and also to get out of that as a subset, and I've spoken to people in Sydney about this, that data for Australia as well because it's one thing to go to my board and say this is happening in San Francisco and it's amazing but you know they're sort of interested in well, what's happening around here and, and why should go uh, government be trying to help amplify and help get replication of this type of thing and get uptake happening. Um, so just somewhere we could go and grab quick stats or up-to-date information um, that just sort of helps illustrate that there is this participation happening uh, it just seems to be there's information, but it's all out there in different different places and uh, just some way to kind of aggregate some of that information somewhere, like a bit of a, a place you can just go to and, and grab that quickly would be really useful <laughs> when one is writing um, documents trying to, to sort of sell the idea to other people. Yeah, from an entrepreneurial perspective too, it's a lot easier to estimate your target market size um, when you have a ready set of statistics. So. Um, in that respect, I would love a page of statistics. That would be amazing. That's great feedback. Thank you, guys. Um, a mobile, a better mobile site would be great too. I just went to the to the site on my cell phone, um, and it was a little difficult. <laughs> I know there's limited budget, but. You know, I, I read a lot on my mobile phone, so um, I'm just going to put that out there. You know. <laughs> yep. As we said before, be frank with us. It's okay. <laughs> um, and then, lastly, job listings. Um, I probably wouldn't go to Shareable for job listings. Um, that wouldn't be something that I would you know, go to Shareable for. Great. Thanks. One of, one of the, the things is like. I'm thinking of my work here where I work in Zero Waste SA and you know we design our website according, we, we, you tend to make the mistake of designing a website according to your programs and what you want to tell people and not what people are coming to your website for. Um, so it would be sort of worth going back with a bit of, you know, a sort of sense of fresh eyes coming to the site and saying, well, you know, is the person coming to the site someone that is looking to try and 
get a start-up happening or to sort of, you know, try and get um, that, that start-up more buy-in and more participation to that or are these people who um, are looking to do the kind of thing I'm doing, working in government, trying to, trying to get something happening around that or are they people that are... Are they journalists? You know, are they... One of the things we have here is we have school students wanting stuff for projects. We have people wanting information on recycling. So, And we had to sort of go back and go, hang on a minute, we're designing our main sort of public electronic public interface for our internal structure, not the people coming to the science. So um, I don't know if you have a sense of the sort of split about who is visiting shareable site. Is it journalists? Is it people looking for ways to to sort of express these ideas to other people? Is it um, the kinds of people that are, are starting up the next relay ride, you know, looking for how other people have done it and, and finding that kind of, you know, place that they can go on and sort of tap into what's already in there to try and make that process easier? So that's just another thought as well. What, what doors are people sort of arriving at when they, when they get to the site? And is it immediately or like who they are? Um, are they from a local authority? You know, uh, so yeah, just be. Are, are they people looking for, you know, how to tackle the kinds of legal barriers that that sort of are, get a bit foggy around some of this stuff? So that's just another thought as well in terms of structure and navigation. Yeah, thank you. Um, the uh, the World Resources Institute used to have a pop up as soon as you got to their site. It said, you know, are you uh, an international organization, an individual, a business, you know, things like that. And I mean, mm -hmm. it's just one question, people click a radio button, and then that's it. Um, and that would be a good way to, that's a way that, I mean, my, my fiance used to work for them. So um, they found that very useful in terms of figuring out their target market more precisely. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Did they do that ongoing or for a period of time and then figured it um, out. I just went to their I just went to their site and, and it's not popping up. Um, but she no longer works there, so I don't know. <laughs> um, okay. I know that it was there for at least two years. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Did Any you other thoughts? Jesse, did, yeah. Jesse, just a question about that. Were they presenting different information that based on that? Uh, presenting no, like a different uh, website? They, they, so they had their, their main website, um, and they did change uh, what, web, what stuff they featured in their, uh, in their sort of slides uh, based on that information. Oh, okay. okay. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Do you yeah. mean on the fly, or do you mean like every, you know, what, no, like I mean, it was like... It was, it was not on the fly. It was, it was yeah. definitely like, okay, at the end of this month, you know, who, who what looked at our website the most? And then they would say, okay, what, what was the next click after they said, you know, they said, okay, I'm from an international organization and I am clicking on governance and access next, you know, on, on this page. Um, so they started featuring slightly more governance and access. Um, but that may have just been a, a one-off one month. So they kept reviewing and, it, and, you know, it was a way for them to keep their content as appropriate as possible to their audience. Great, thank you. Cool. Other um, other thoughts or ideas uh, from people? If not, we can move on to the last uh, section. All right. Uh, Neil, would you like to say just a little about what uh, came out from the San Francisco meeting? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Seth. Um, so in our little session in San Francisco about website content, we talked about three, th three things, um, three broad categories. We um, focus on, on people and how they share. So people wanted more stories about that. I mean, it, it was a small group. So um, you know, the, in, in this, within this group, they were more interested in the personal side of sharing rather than the sort of business or industry side. Um, and they also said uh, don't be afraid of controversy to get, you know, get converse important conversations going. Um, and, uh, and that attracts people into, into discussion and raises the level of awareness. So we wanted to see more of that. 
and consider new users and returning users. So we have about, I'd say about 40 percent, 30 to 40 percent of um, our audience each month are returning users, and the rest are new. So we have a lot of new users, and so these two groups are looking for different things. The, the new users, I mean, they may land on the page for one story and just really not get what we're talking about at all. Um, so we may need to uh, kind of have a sort of ladder of engagement for them or something like that. Um, and returning users, you know, uh, are looking maybe perhaps for more depth and to increase their knowledge. So that's what we talked about. So uh, again, how do these um, these thought these ideas square with you all? And um, what other ideas do you have about our uh, the content on the site, the articles, and other content on the site? Yeah, this is Chris Canberra again. Um, <clears throat> I think yeah, some uh, more articles directly looking at how laws or regulations, um, sort of the nuts and bolts of changing, uh, you know, a growth economy to a sharing economy on a on a sort of on a mainstream level, um, would be really interesting. I uh, know that's probably another level of Analysis or research, um, but that's uh, they're they're really important artic important articles which go beyond just the shareable community um, to you know as a resource for journalists or whoever else for affecting um, for affecting systemic change I guess so that's um, that's something that I would would like to see. I'd like to emphatically second that. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if there was like a whole sort of section of that site that was all for the legal eagles going on there? You know, because things are quite different. You know, obviously in different jurisdictions. And um, mm. I actually, I actually um, posted mm. a an article to the Post Growth Facebook page, which I, I curate about how um, clotheslines out of doors were kind of um, banned in some parts in some communities in America. And this was kind of bizarre to Australians because it's just sort of what we've always done. So things are, are quite um, different in different jurisdictions. So even having a p place where people with a legal background or even doing you know, pro bono work or we've got an environmental defenders office here in Adelaide that does pro bono work for environment groups, for example, can come and find out you know, what's going on um, and how other people are tackling these kind of legal barriers to, to sharing would be it would be good for people working in that practice of law, but it would also be good for people wanting to <laughs> eavesdrop on that conversation and find out what's going on as well. I completely agree. Um, especially, I mean, coming from San Francisco, I know that you know the the working the sharing economy working group is here, uh, sort of. Um, I think that that when a city can set an example. Um, or when, when any city uh, does anything relating to uh, sharing, uh, that there would be it would be great to have one place where sort of that type of uh, public policy uh, action were recorded um, yes, or written yes. about. And um, and I think Shareable would be a fantastic place to host that. Um, I, I noticed that there are the there are the tabs, um, cities and civic system specifically. And um, and I clicked on both of those just to sort of investigate right now what was what was under them, and I was hoping for um, a tiny bit more. Well, you know, I mean, there's there's some de there's definitely some good stuff, but I think it, I think if it were slightly more organized um, into th these are some legal solutions that we've discovered um, and that have been written about, I think that would be kind of that would be pretty cool. So some tools as well as, as the stories. So, and I think as well, getting people to identify what they're doing as sharing approaches. For example, I know stuff's been done here in my city, but I don't know that anybody has their has it has connected it in their head with this broader movement and this momentum. So, it's it's um, it's actually getting people to understand a bit of a, a taxonomy of. Of sharing, you know, and realizing that what they've actually done is part of a collaborative consumption or a sharing movement as well. Sharon, can you clarify about what when you mean by tools? Do you mean what kind of legal changes are have been made in different parts of the world? 
I, I can give you an example that um, we have a food rescue charity called Oz Harvest here in South Australia. It's been modelled on um, the second harvest one from the States. The only reason it's operating here in South Australia is because there was an amendment made to an act which uh, absolved the donor from liability. So we would not be able to collect that food to go to people in need. It would be going to landfill had it not been the amendment to, to that act. So it would be almost like, you know, what achievements people have made in being able to do those sorts of things and, and maybe, you know, it just it's so difficult with law in particular because, you know, the way things work vary so widely from different one jurisdiction to another, but to be able to see where other people have done it and how they went about it, it could be, um, you know, for somebody in another part of the world trying to get that to happen. We've banned plastic bags in this state, for example. I know that's not a sharing type thing, but I mean, when people can find out how that was done, steal words out of um, <laughs> out of a piece of legislation. So, yeah, just sort of um, having a bit of a, a collected kind of um, resource about where there is an existing public policy around X or where there was a, a law change that enabled Y, um, and not that you know Sherable would have to go out and, and find all these out, but I mean people could submit them, and it, it could just be there as a bit of a a resource for people to say, well, I'm facing this issue. I want to get you know um, this happening in my in my jurisdiction, and I've got legal barriers. But what have other people done? I think it would also be uh, cool to have a. Oops, sorry. I very, a very quick comment. Um, I think it would be it would be great to have a copy of uh, of whatever law or act or amendment um, had been had been pushed, um, just so that uh, if a lawyer wanted to to really take a good look at it and see the legal, the legalese, um, that would be a good resource to to host. I mean, I think that's maybe an addition to Sharon's uh, definition of tools. Yeah. Uh, hi, this is Michael uh, in San Francisco again. Um, I like where the conversation is going. Um, the, uh, it, it brings up two, uh, two thoughts. Uh, one is uh, that a, a lot of what's going on in the, in the journalism <coughs> community um, is the, this idea of blowing up the article, uh, meaning not, con not considering a, 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 a a story, sort of a, a, a one-time commodity, but something that forms a larger database of knowledge, uh, but is you know, but, but has the same level of utility and context and explanation uh, as a story. So um, instead of you know uh, just feeding the beast and posting however many stories per day to get the you know to 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 get the uh, the, the the numbers up. Um, and to keep sort of you know uh, keep keep a certain amount of churn of of writing about these issues and then linking back to previous stories um, and, and creating this sort of uh, you know uh, uh, complex web of, of interlinking um, to to create a more of a structured database approach to it and, and where each node is the the idea. Uh, that that is that, that people are trying to institute as a public policy in a particular geographic, or uh, as a particular policy, and then each uh, e each uh, uh, law or initiative uh, can be tracked by a, a sort of homepage for that idea. So you know, recycling laws. Click here for you know these 20 cities that are trying to do this, and then you and then you drill down. And you get the text of the legislation. You get resources and links out. Um, it's 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 work to set up, um, definitely. But you might consider uh, doing it as a wiki uh, and mm. seeing how that works. Mm. Uh, it, that, that would be a lot cool. more. Yeah. Um, you, all you have to do is is create the structure and and tell the community about it, and you, you could build that up much faster. Than having mm -hmm. a bunch of freelance writers go out and do all that, all those hundreds of hours of research. Mm, um, crowdsource it. Yeah, crowdsource it. Um, the other, the Share other, the work. Uh, huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and you can just embed that whole wiki in your in your template. Uh, you know, on a page. You know, you can just in install like MediaWiki or something. Uh, you know, uh, behind the Drupal on your on your 
website if you're still on Drupal. But um, the so, and the other thing is you, you might as a as kind of a, 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 a mental experiment look at ALEC, um, the American Legislative Exchange Committee or whatever. It's this uh, shadowy uh, conservative group that's <laughs> creating all this model legislation uh, around the country to like ban abortion and uh, uh, you know allow uh, uh, the criminally insane to carry Uzis and you know just just all all this stuff. And there have been God. there have been I'm sorry. No, I was just exclaiming. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you know, and, and there have been all these stories in the press about how successful this group has been, um, because basically what they do is they mass produce laws, um, and it would be you know it would be interesting to see if anybody you know it would be interesting to see if anybody is doing similar things on the you know on sort of the the, the light side of the force. Um, <laughs> To, to you know, and and to be a resource for sort of best practices for for sharing policy, uh, and, and and that could be a whole you know sub subsection of your uh, of of the site and something that anchors uh, people and keeps them coming back and, and it's a form it's an easy form of participation uh, and once you get you know, and then you, you what you could do is you could deputize a few of your best bloggers. To be in charge of this wiki, and and to and you know and to set the rules uh, of participation and make sure that they have to have, you know, they have to have citations of the exact law, uh, and, and you know have a certain structure to their posts, uh, and then and you maybe have to feed it with a, you know with like 20 different examples, and then you probably get hundreds of of, uh, of uh, contributions over time. That, that's what I meant by toolkit. By something like a tool to help people uh, out there, you know, that if you want change to happen, you have to go to usually an elected member with something as a suggestion of how to go about that. So, drawing on the existing knowledge and existing um, examples that are out there somewhere, even if they don't always translate from one jurisdiction to another, um, would sort of halve that work. You could even have um, people who who are have a background in law can sign up as kind of you know, people that, that can provide advice to sharing advocates out there trying to get laws changed or do whatever. So peer-to-peer um, -peer kind of legal <laughs> legal advice yeah, if they're inclined to do some pro bono work, they can uh, they can sort of, you know, be there and be able to help that person. You know, I don't have a background in law, um, so to be able to access an equivalent of the Environmental Defenders Office sort of, you know, online through a sharing platform would mean that any I've got a guy at the moment who's trying to get a local authority in Adelaide to look at compound housing, which is basically like co-housing, and and trying to get um, them to consider a new form of development. And so he's looking for people to come along and talk to that proposal. So people that are in need of practical um, help in trying to get development and planning, um, you know, to to do something different or to get it to sort of get different ideas and different things happening out there um, and to sort of kind of crack open the mindset I suppose would, would really benefit from you know being able to go well they've done this here you know and you know here's how it happened successfully would be a really great way of a really great toolkit for people to draw on and go into and, and sort of put under the nose of decision makers to show that it's possible it could be done. Hey, I know we're at time. This is Maritza in Melbourne. I just want to throw something super quick, if that's all right. Sure, thank you. Um, comment on something that Neil said. I my first impression of the home page is that it's uh, you need to speak this language already. So in terms of a ladder of engagement, maybe one way to do it is having I don't know how you guys curate your content or how you go about it, but there's some very specific stuff that you need to be in the shareable mindset for quite a while to even 
begin to follow. It's a bit of a subculture, and I'm just sort of mm. acknowledging that. So how do we welcome people to this? So mm. maybe on the homepage amongst, like right now there is the Museum for Urban Reclaimers and the Fall and Rise of Great Public Places and so on and so forth, and maybe one of those could be sort of Shareable 101, and there could be a mm. different take on it every so often so that somebody that has absolutely no idea what you guys are talking about gets a bit of an introduction. Um, different than like a classic about us section, for example, because it's it's part of an article, so people can really engage in a, in a more meaningful way. And just a very short, sort almost technical comment. The current homepage has um, the topic of the article in a solid color box that I first assumed was either a tag or. Uh, the section of the website like work and enterprise or civic system or ecosystem, and it's not, it's just content. It, it's basically uh, the topic of the article, and that wasn't really clear to me. I thought it was, anyway, I got confused the first time, so I just thought I'd share that, that I thought it was a different way of organizing than it is. may very well just be me, so take it with a ton of salt, but I thought I'd flag that. Thanks. Thank, Thank you so you much. For sharing. Uh, I'm actually. I would, second, oh. I would second Marissa's comments. Okay. I would say it. Yeah. <laughs> Third. Oh uh, yeah, this is a theme I'm I'm hearing loud and clear. Thank you. Yeah, that's great to hear. Um, just just, great just to have back. a sort of you know, are you new to sharing? Start here mm -hmm. type place, which gives Thank a really a good overview. Because I found I've been, had my head in this for 12 months. I've come back into my work role trying to to push this thinking and literally feeling like I'm speaking a different dialect of English to other people around here who are now familiar with it because I've been talking to them for seven months. But um, to be able to sort of point them to something that gives them a, a kind of aha, you know, and, and here's all the sort of facets to what this is about um, because I, I would support what Maritza said about it's, it's a bit of a, not quite a subculture, but I mean if, if, you, if you're already familiar with it, it's easier to use than if you're quite new to it or coming landing on it the first time. What is it actually all about and, you know, what's... You know, how do all the different bits fit together? Just to have that bit of an overview section, I think, would be really valuable. Now, Sharon, uh, let's yeah, be honest. This is absolutely a, sh a subculture. I mean, if you go anywhere inland, it does not like people share, but they don't call it sharing. They call it correct, being a good yep. neighbor. You know, mm -hmm. like the concept of defining this topic in such a way is mm. absolutely a subculture. Mm. Um, that's, you know, that's, that's what I'll say on that. But, um, but having a landing page of sorts, how to, I mean, one of the top tags I'm looking at it, videos, DIY, and then how to share. You know? So uh, I think having a landing page of sorts would be extremely helpful. Yeah, and, and getting, and, and I don't like uh, sharing 101. It sounds a little pedantic. Um, uh, you know how how you how you uh, what you call that matters. So how to how to share, why share, uh, what is sharing? Something something like that to to entice people mm -hmm. in. Uh -huh. Hey, thank you all for these ideas. This is great. I'm going to move us along because I do want to be mindful of people's uh, time commitments. And we said this was going to be an hour. And we started a few minutes late, but it's been an hour. So um, thank you for the, for all those. Um, I know people probably have more ideas, which is fantastic, um, and we would love to hear those. So um, if you have other feedback, um, when this uh, meeting ends, there's going to be a survey that pops up, and you can send any, any comments in that way. Um, that's one option. Um, you can also email me any feedback you have. I would welcome that. Um, and we will, as I mentioned at the beginning of the call, be posting the videos in a short write up of some of the highlights um, on the website. And if you want to add anything in the comments there, that would also be very welcome. So um, uh, so, th so, thank you for that. Um, uh, so uh, the, the survey should be popping up now for you. Um, and um, if you want to take a moment at the end to fill it out, great. Uh, otherwise, like I said, email is also welcome. So really I want to just sincerely thank all of you so much um, for taking an hour out of your day at various time zones around the world and spending it with us to uh, see how we can help create more sharing in the world. Thank you. <laughs>